Welcome to the Meat and Potatoes Podcast. We're here with Joanna McKenna, who is the CEO of Jane. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am good. Thank you. Um, you guys are fairly close here uh, in this office park, um, but thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I'm excited to learn more about Jane and what you do. Yeah, so am I. I'm super excited to be here. All right. Let's start with what is Jane? What do you guys do? Uh, so Jane is an e-commerce marketplace. It's focused on supporting women sellers and entrepreneurs um, selling their goods online. Uh, we focus mainly in the soft line space, so apparel, accessories, uh, shoes, as well as home decor and some consumable goods like skincare and beauty. Very cool. So I was at a family birthday party and there's a lot of young kids yesterday and they all looked like models. They all had the cutest little outfits on. And uh, they all looked like uh, they came from Camelot. My guess is some of them got some of uh, their clothes from Jane or their parents did. But they look so much cuter than I did when I was a kid. And I spent some time on the website. And it's just amazing how cute and well thought out some of these things are. Yeah. Well, we have to thank our merchandising team for that. I think a lot of thought goes into working with sellers, making sure that we're on track from trends and seasonality, but also how do we serve it up in a really curated way? So what you might shop for on Jane might be different. We might serve up some some men's apparel for you, um, unless you're searching for things for your small child, but uh, curation is a big piece of that. Yeah. Well, kudos to whoever picked the little onesie that I think it's for Easter. There's chicks on it and it said, I've got chick, the chicks are all over me or something like that, right? <laughs> I think it's fun to have fun with uh, apparel, right? Yeah, I think it's great. I think there's a lot of really cool trends happening, and I think there's a lot of wonderful sellers. 90% of our sellers are women, so they have a really keen eye on what's on trend, what's in fashion, what they want to see on themselves, what they want to see on their little ones, and I think that comes through on the marketplace. Very cool. I'm not very familiar with merchandising or retail or fashion, as you can tell. So you've got a, an entrepreneur that's got really cool sweatpants and, and joggers, they would partner with you to distribute that. Is that the business model? Sort of, kind of, not really. Um, so essentially the business model is we have a marketplace platform and let's say you sell these beautiful joggers. Um, you can create an account, upload all of your catalog, you control of all of your listing information, your pricing, um, your inventory levels, and you start selling on Jane's platform. Our job is to make sure that we're curating your products and serving it up to the consumer and that we're also driving consumer demand to your product. So it's a true marketplace business where you're in charge. We're giving you all the tools to help you scale your business however big you want it to go. So we have sellers who started out with Jane about 12 years ago and have grown into you know eight uh, figures or more uh, selling on Jane. And then we have sellers who just started and they're just at the beginning stages of their sort of entrepreneur journey. Very cool. So they can kind of control how quick it goes. Some could go really quick and expand. Some could just be in their, their comfort zone. Correct. And we're going to help you along the way, right? Give you the tools, give you the education um, so that you understand how to plan inventory, how to manage your expenses, how to market better, all of those different pieces so that you can be successful on, on J Marketplace and we can continue to kind of help you in your growth journey. Very cool, because I've heard a lot of stories of of these entrepreneurs that have really cool products and they're fun and they look amazing, but then you've got all the not fun stuff like legal documents and inventory and calculations. That's where you guys come in and help and, and give them a shot of confidence, it sounds like. Yeah, on the back end, so we're working right now to bring up a, a sort of different model so that sellers can see, hey, here's my price point right now, but if I raise, if I lower my price by let's say 50 cents or a dollar, then um, I'll get this many sales and this more exposure. So really giving them the tools to understand how to fluctuate with their margins to meet the consumer demand. And there's just gonna be so many more tools coming out as we kind of expand the marketplace. Very cool. And you mentioned like 90% of the folks are women that use this, that use Jane. Um, was that always the, the goal and the ambition or have you guys kind of ended up there through some pivots and rethinks? I think we've always predominantly had women businesses, uh, women sellers uh, on Jane.com. I think what's changed is that we used to be a deals platform, meaning that you would sell your cute onesie in a 72-hour window and then it would just disappear. 
and they'd have to come back through and, and make another deal and, and get up online. There were a lot of different business models similar to that, like Zulily and Groupon at the time. Um, we've pivoted the business now and we're moving to a full-fledged evergreen marketplace, which allows them a lot more control. Um, they can keep their listings up all the time. If they're out of stock, they're out of stock. When they get their inventory back in, they can update their inventory levels and control their pricing. But we've been predominantly women um, and we welcome all sellers. Doesn't matter your gender, doesn't matter anything about you, but we're highly focused on supporting women sellers and women entrepreneurs to be successful. We think that's the niche for us in a marketplace world. Awesome. How many um, sellers do you have on the platform? We have over 2,000 sellers today. Very cool. So um, if somebody's got aspirations to be on Jane, what is the process like? It's pretty simple. There, You go to sell.jane.com and fill out an application and the account management team will get in touch with you and get you live on the platform as quickly as possible. We're actually improving the model so that you can literally go through the process all in one sitting and get live within the same day. Wow. So as long as you've got the inventory, you could just be you can, cooking. Yeah. Get ready to go. Um, and I think um, that's the exciting part. I think uh, there's a lot of consumers who have changed the way they want to shop and we're trying to figure out how do we get there with them? How do we provide a frictionless experience for you to shop and discover uh, whether you came for one product, but we curated and, and, and showed you something else that was interesting and how do we keep you coming back? And then how do we also introduce the tools so that certain sellers can go live and have an interaction and really create a community with um, their consumers who are shopping their specific brand. Awesome. So this morning, in fact, I was on the website and I know I clicked maybe 10 or 15 different buttons, one of which was like storage and, and things like that. I don't know the exact term, but uh, obviously I, I like storing things in boxes. Um, and yet there's all sorts of offerings. So I assume at some point, like if I come back, it'll be a little bit more curated to what I was thinking at the time. Well, I don't know about what you're thinking, because I hope we can get that technology and I can have ESP and know exactly what you're thinking and serve <laughs> it up. But yes, based on your search history, based on where you clicked, um, then we'll be able to curate better for you. The more you come, the more you search, the more you shop, the better experience you're going to have. And this is like a, an elusive target that may never be uh, solved of what do consumers want? How are they buying things in 2023 versus 2013? Um, is this fun for you to always be like, trying to solve this this problem is it part of like your dna i th i think so i've i've loved ever since i got into the marketplace arena um with amazon and then walmart and now here at jane it's always been about how is the consumer going to shop in the future how are we going to meet them where they want to be met how are we going to give them the ease of quickly shopping one click buying moving quickly so they can go live their lives and they're not just stuck on their device all day i think it's about solving the friction piece because there's always going to be friction. How do we stay ahead of that and, and make it easy for you to shop online? And I think it's all also thinking about how do we drive value? How do we make sure that we're giving you quality products, a good experience from the seller and making sure that it's value driven as well? Yeah. And I assume it changes quite a bit. Yeah. Year over year, uh, a new technology comes out, um, some economic impact happens, some more, some pandemic. Uh, I imagine it keeps you on your toes constantly, you and your team. It does. And, you know, we have an incredible CTO, David Smith, who has moved us to a headless commerce solution. And I think that for us is a big removal of friction internally, where now we can have the ease to plug and go and do proof of concepts with different providers that can help us maybe we want to start offering different um, services to our sellers. And now we can just kind of plug in through APIs and have an easier connection and move a lot faster. Very cool. Um, so you mentioned that you kind of a, a pivot and uh, a new way of thinking, a new way of, of operating, Jane. When did this thought occur and, and how's the rollout been? And, and what are some nuggets of advice for other entrepreneurs, other leaders that are going to need to do this? whether they've been painted into a corner or they just need to do it to optimize? I think for Jane specifically, um, the deal site worked for a long time and that's how the consumer wanted to shop. They wanted to have that urgency if it's only going to be there for a day or two and buy it quickly. But then the consumer changed, right? Their journey is constantly evolving. And so it was really about reading where the customer journey was going and making sure that we were meeting them where they want to be met. So 
we saw that there there was a change happening. The sort of deals model itself was dwindling, and it was an opportunity for us to rethink how do we want to present Jane. And marketplace is really the place for for us to go, and our sellers are super excited about it. Not to have to constantly create a deal and constantly kind of get back into a queue and and upload their products, where now they can really manage their business, manage their inventory, and so the idea kind of went into flight, I would say, a year and a half ago, um, and it's been full speed, right? It's, it's, it would have been great to just have a little bit of time to kind of think about it and how do we want to roll it out, but it was really like, this is the way of the future for us here at Jane, and then it's been heads down and, and pedal to the metal in terms of moving away from an old tech stack to a headless commerce solution, changing how we operate internally, the processes that we have and changing even how the teams are laid out and how, what they're working on. So it's been a big lift and super proud of the entire organization, how quickly they've responded and kind of leaned into the pivot. I would say to other entrepreneurs or people sort of in the C-suite, um, follow your gut. You, you get that knowing, that little voice inside. Um, don't quell it. When you see something changing in your industry, quickly sort of val- evaluate your business and evaluate if you should be making a pivot and then be very proactive. Um, there's nothing worse than being reactive in any industry. So I think it's about really understanding like what's happening within your realm and moving quickly to respond. Yeah. I love it. Cause it seems like a lot of us over the last three years have been reactive, right? And uh, there's too much inventory, not enough and too many delays, not enough delays, right? It's just been curveball after curveball. And uh, you guys kind of locked in and zeroed in on on this this strategy, and it sounds like it wasn't prudent to talk about it. It was prudent to do it. Right. Very cool. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your background because um, it it is unique, and um, it involves some really cool stuff that I've never heard before. So, all the way from like where you were born to your career leading up to now. So you want like the five minute elevator pitch? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm born and raised in Paris, France. I hide my accent really well. I'm a child of Holocaust survivors. So both my parents were children when the Holocaust started. My father was in France. My mother was in former East Germany. Um, So it gave me a very different perspective on life. My parents didn't have me until they were older in their early 40s, which uh, back then was really late in life to have a child. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it was a huge benefit. Uh, My parents were fascinating and wonderful people. My mom is still with us today. Um, And we traveled all around the world. We lived everywhere from Paris and London, Geneva, New York, Miami, LA. Uh, Sometimes we'd stay for a bit. Sometimes we'd stay for a couple of years. And it gave us a really great perspective on on life. Um, And then I went to undergrad here in the United States. I ended up also going to graduate school and pursuing a law degree. Um, And while I was doing that, my dad died on a commercial airline crash. Um, And I was decided at that time that it was probably not law that I wanted to pursue, but I didn't know what I wanted to pursue. So I ended up working for a small tech firm at the beginning of the dot-com boom. Um, We all know how that ended. Um, But I um, was introduced to sales and to technology, and I really blossomed in doing that. And then um, I got an opportunity um, to uh, be part of that acquisition of that business. And then I went and decided to be a founder, which both is fun and terrible all at the same time. And I started an e-commerce uh, dropship model that was focused on children's furniture and everything from, you know, the nursery furniture to even the clothing for the baby. And it was really a uh, fascinating time to be part of that. There was a lot of really cool brands coming out like Nursery Works and uh, Monte Design and, and all of these different brands that were really leaning into modern Scandinavian, just really beautiful furniture that you wanted to have out and not hide it in a corner somewhere. Yeah. And so that really set me on a path to work in e-commerce. And then um, I ended up working for several other small firms and ended up at Amazon in the marketplace um, division. And that was really great, really found my footing in what I love, helping supporting sellers and brands be successful and, and reach you know a huge audience. And so I've pretty much done that through my career at Amazon, at Walmart, and now here at Jane. Very cool. So you had startup and then not startups, right? Big old companies that know a thing or two about making money and marketplaces and all of that. Um, What are some principles that can be applied to PowerPoint and a dream startup and then gigantic fortune one, two, three behemoths? 
I think the interesting part about Amazon specifically is that it never really lost its startup mentality. There's the the saying, it's always day one, right? Um, That Jeff Bezos kind of has ingrained in everybody. And it's really the way it's been successful is that they're always curious. They're always moving quickly. They're not afraid to fail. And I think that's very transmissible over to being a startup, right? If you're a new founder, you have to have that mentality of like being able to go out there. It's okay if you fail. You have to learn from it. You have to keep moving forward um, and not losing that mentality as you go along. I think when you look at some of the other big companies I worked at, like Walmart and Johnson and Johnson, what they bring to the table is you're still curious, but um, as we've said, is that once you hit a certain level of growth, then the parents need to come home. Mm-hmm. And you need to have um, a lot of structure in order to be able to scale. So if you're at 50 million or 100 million, you want to get to half a billion dollars or beyond, you really need to start understanding that it's fine to still have that mentality, but you need to really have processes in place. And a lot of people think that's the introduction of, of having red tape or bureaucracy, but it's not. It's really just having accountability and having the ability to scale your business. Yeah. Um, I can imagine there's a lot of like tried and true processes at Walmart. There is. And that's why they're the Fortune 1 company in the world. Yeah. And uh, whether it originated with, you know, Sam Walton or somebody down the line, they're like, we're sick of this not working the best way that it could. We've got to put some guide rails in, right? Right. And um, with where you guys are at Jane, where are you in that life cycle? So... We are definitely in the uh, the grown-ups are home life cycle. Um, we are very curious still and solving a lot of big problems and moving at lightning speed, probably faster than any of us actually want to go. And we recognize we can only move at this speed for you know a short period of time before there's real, real burnout. So um, we're putting in processes in place, realigning teams, the new ways that we're going to be as a marketplace business. And we're currently in the alpha beta of the marketplace business. But we definitely have a lot of structure, right? A lot of um, great people, both from the e-commerce and retail industry who have done this at scale at some of the big companies. So we bring a lot of that influence into the company today. Yeah. So it seems like as the CEO, and you're fairly recent at Jane, correct? Correct. Um, It's communicated that we're going to move fast for a little while. We know we're not going to just move fast constantly. Um, Do you put like a a timeline there is it like OKRs once we get here we'll we'll be shifting gears back maybe to fourth gear instead of fifth gear how do you communicate that to the team yeah so it's so much change for the teams and my heart goes out to them because I, I feel the speed that we're moving at they didn't even have OKRs when we got here so that's the introduction of really how do we do business internally differently. So now there's OKRs in place there's a n- new model for how we're measuring success and more data and more metrics Um, And it can all be a lot when that's coming at you. But because of that, we have a very clear timeline of when, you know, we're never going to take our foot off the gas, but we're going to be able to um, step back, reevaluate, look if we're going in the right direction and make pivots as we get into Q3 and we're in full GA of the the marketplace. And I think everyone's working hard to get us there right now. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of feelings that a lot of human beings can share and empathize with, but being the the new CEO of a company um, is one that's kind of unique, right? Which you've experienced. And at some point, you know, you've decided to do it and your first day on the job is going to require something, right? Whether it's communicating with everyone or communicating with just the department leads, but it was your decision on how to be the new CEO, the new team member. Um, How did you go about it? So, It was interesting because when I entered Jane, uh, they saw themselves in a high growth situation, which I think for a lot of companies, especially those in retail and e-commerce, realized that a lot of their growth was masked by COVID. And so when you look at that, you have to say, all right, where are we really trending and how is the business going? The business was going well, but just not as well as everybody thought. So we had to really look at like, you know, what is important to us at Jane? What do we need to keep? And that's the ethos of obviously supporting women-owned sellers and brands. And that's something we just don't want to lose and we're not going to sacrifice as we move to marketplace. I think the other point for me was that there was no C-suite. So part of my mandate from the board was to bring an entire C-suite team in. So you're in a 
transformative year. <laughs> there is a lot of pressure from macro issues, specifically around interest rates and how the economy is faring, and you're trying to bring in really top talent while changing the entire business model. So it's been a lot, but I think for me it was all about we have to communicate, and we have to communicate often and clearly with everybody what's going on. I think there's just also people are individual human beings, and everyone's like, well, I want to be communicated like this. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could curate communication to every single person who works for us the way they want to receive it. And sometimes that doesn't sit well with people. They're like, well, I want to be at the table. I'm like, I wish I, everybody could be at the table, but then we would move really, really slow. Mm -hmm. So part of that has been a learning, I think, on both sides. One for me as, as the CEO, but also for all of our employees, of like we have to collaborate together. And sometimes we're not going to agree, but that's part of the growth that we're in we, we got to disagree and then we have to commit to move faster yeah i can imagine like i might be self-conscious because i might be thinking like after the first two months like if some employees are sitting around the water cool what do you think of the new ceo right and again because i haven't experienced that right new kid on the block that happens to be the ceo um did that ever like permeate your thoughts of like i hope they like me i hope they like my vision i hope they like what our plans are, or were you just like, I, I'm confident in my abilities. This is the way it's going to be. Well, one, I wish there were people standing around the water cooler, but we're a retail, for, uh, we're a remote first company. So everybody's remote and people are coming in from time to time. Um, I also don't see it as a me, right? I think that's a differentiator for how I lead. It's an us. We're a team. Mm -hmm. And this is our strategy. This is how we're going to do it together. And I think there's going to be people who like you. There's going to be people who don't like you. I don't take it personally one way or the other. I think very few people actually know me. Like no one's coming to my house and doing laundry with me on Sunday, unfortunately. But I think um, the measure of success will be, can we get to where we're going? And we're, we can only do so as a team. Yeah, I love it. So we have uh, a lot of events here at our headquarters. And one of those over the years has been the consumer chapter. And uh, depending on the topic and the content, they're talking about how to sell stuff, um, how to distribute stuff, how to do partnerships, all sorts of stuff. But a recurring theme has been a lot of them are getting ripped off by uh, China, other uh, unscrupulous players where they or their clients have put in a lot of time and effort into this product. And the end result is fine, but it could have been a lot better. But they've got to deal with all this stuff pretty big and outside of their power a lot of the times. Um, is this a problem that you guys experience at Jane or an overall just opinion with where you've worked, how you've seen the, the market evolve? What are your thoughts? So at Jane, we haven't experienced it. And because of my experience where I've worked before, we're putting in guardrails. Um, we want to work specifically with the sellers, the creators of whatever the products are and also get from them a list of like, here are the people who are authorized to sell our products. And so if they don't want to sell directly on Jane, some big brands maybe don't have the ability to do drop ship and sell directly. So we'll go to one of their authorized distributors, authorized third party sellers. That's one way to help protect their product and their brand. I think for a lot of the smaller sellers that have really great ideas and they've launched a product and then they get knocked off by manufacturing overseas. Um, it's sometimes because it's faster, right? People in foreign countries can spin up your product a little bit faster or you're manufacturing overseas and someone is ripping you off. So part of that is making sure that we're also, for the time being, only allowing U.S. sellers and U.S. Uh, manufacturers and brands to sell on chain. Will that always be the case? Don't know. But it's a great way for us to kind of really be able to expand quickly and also protect the third-party sellers that are selling on our site. I think there's a lot of marketplaces. They can't do that right? They have to embrace sellers from all around the world. Um, they are, depending on their business model and their strategy, need to have as many products and depth of catalog as they can have to meet the consumer demand. Totally get it. But at what price? I think the same thing that's happened in the banking world is happening in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. If you don't diversify where you manufacture, then you're going to have a problem, especially if another pandemic hits, if, you know, we have issues with China trade wars or something happens and you can no longer manufacture at the speed or at the price that you need to, you need to have other options in place. So even if it's going to be a little bit more expensive, squeeze your margins a little bit more. I think the consumer understands that 
And I think there's a way to communicate that. There's a way to raise prices that are still on par without, you know, um, turning off the consumer, but also protecting you as the entrepreneur, as the seller, as the manufacturer to know that, hey, I can make my product in two or three other places. Yeah. Yeah. Heaven forbid we like can go a little bit without some recession or some war or some pandemic. I think everyone would would appreciate that. Um, I'm always interested in uh, companies like Jane that get to support other entrepreneurs. And I imagine there's all sorts of fun, awesome stories. Um, do you have any that come to mind that are kind of your favorites? You can omit the names or whatever, but just a general overall, like it's kind of fun to see their success. Yeah. I'll omit the names because um, I haven't spoken to them and got their permission to use their name. But um, there, there's many sellers that have very similar stories where they started at their kitchen table. They started in their garage. Um, we have one seller particularly who started doing graphic tees. And over the course of the last eight, nine years now has a 5,000 square foot facility, employs, you know, two dozen people and is super successful on our platform. And we, you know, that's sort of the backbone of Jane, these stories. And you, you'll see it in every category and subcategory where these sellers started on Jane. This was, they, it was just an idea. Maybe it was just making extra money for their family. And now they're the main breadwinner. And now they're, they're, I have so many stories of wives who now employ their husbands (laughs) because their business got so big on Jane. And that's a great story. And that's our whole purpose of being here is how to create a platform where women, But every person who has an idea and wants to have a platform to sell it on and how can we support you? And some people want to be the next billion dollar brand. Great. Jane wants to be part of that story for you. And some people just want to have a small little company that they can enjoy and love what they do every day. And wherever you are on that growth journey, Jane can be part of that story. Yeah. Well said. And for me, you know, if I was an employee at Jane, that would be one of the best things. Um, These stories are so much better than... um, a lot of the other entrepreneurial stories that we all hear, they're still cool, but these ones are like life-changing and uh, they come from like a pure entrepreneurial vision, right? It's very cool. I always tell people when you buy something on Jane, you're not just buying something like some other marketplaces. Um, When you buy something on Jane, you're really buying into something. You're supporting a seller, usually a woman. Um, You're supporting her business, her community, her family. And that can change lives. And I think that's where, you know, we, that's the spot we want to play in. It's not about, are we competing against some of the big marketplaces? No, we're not here to compete. We're here to support um, businesses and families and change people's lives. Because I think that's going to be the lasting legacy of Jane. Yeah, absolutely. What are you uh, and your team most excited about over the next 24, 36 months? Marketplace? Being fully live is um, really sort of going to be a tipping point for us. We're really excited for that. Um, I'm excited as well for all the new technologies that we're going to be bringing to sellers so they can better and more efficiently run their business and grow on Jane. I'm excited to uh, hopefully next year have a big seller Jane summit. Um, So that'll be really great bringing people to Salt Lake City to celebrate and learn and and do brainstorming sessions and breakout sessions and have big speakers. And I think that'll be really exciting as we head into 2024. And I think just watching the career growth of everybody who works at Jane, everybody from our customer service teams to our account managers, uh, we've introduced new uh, development planning, which I think will be really exciting to watch people as they go after their dreams because our employees too have careers and dreams and families and they want to get to the next place and i'm hoping that somebody on this team wants my seat and how can i develop them to become the next ceo very cool well um i've never sold anything online and we were talking a little bit before i don't buy very many things online but i would actually like to come to that event um because my guess is it's going to be full of like optimistic energy whereas a lot of other events it's just like i gotta be here (laughs) but this one sounds like it'll be a lot of fun yeah, and we've had a few of these in a smaller form. So we've had the seller open houses. I think we have them every quarter now. Um, and it's been great. And sellers have been local. Some sellers are flying in. And the energy is amazing. Uh, sellers are super excited. They're excited about their own growth. They want to know how they can bring more products to the platform, where are opportunities for them to expand their their own product catalog. So it's a lot of good energy. And I totally agree. I go to a lot of conferences. And sometimes it's 
humdrum. Um, but definitely the Stellar Jane events are amazing. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much, Joanne, for joining us. Um, this has been great. Uh, color me a fan of Jane, whereas a few days ago I knew it existed and I uh, knew there was a lot of positive uh, outlook out there, but uh, it's so fun to like hear what actually is happening within the company and what you guys are doing. So thank you for the, for the time. Thank you for having me on the show. It's great talking to you. Appreciate it.